Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is the Apple Smoked Barbecue Turkey. That's right guys, we're back on the turkey train this week and this time we're gonna be doing an apple brine turkey with an apple infused butter injection cooked over applewood and finished with a cranberry apple sauce. We're cooking it on the Kamado Joe Classic 3. So as my buddy Eric would say, let's get them dream team. So what we're working with here is a 15 pound turkey. This is just one of the commercially raised turkeys that you can buy at any store. It's the easiest thing to get a hold of. So that's what we're gonna cook because we, that, that's what we feel like most of you guys would be cooking at home. And that 15 pound range is really where I like it. 12 to 16 is a great range. I know a big old 22, 24 pound bird looks really impressive, but the truth is they just don't cook as well and they cook a lot longer. Part of the reason they don't cook as well is because it takes so long to cook them. So if you're looking to feed a crowd, go with a couple smaller birds, you'll be much more happy with the end product. Now this bird right here has been injected with up to 8% solution. It tells us that right there on the package, they have to put it on there. You're gonna wanna look out for that though because they'll try and get you up to 16%, 18% if they can. So make sure you're looking for the least amount of solution added to the bird because that's the least amount a solution that you have to overcome to get the bird to taste the way that you want it to. I'm gonna prepare this bird spatchcock style because I love the way a bird cooks up. When the backbone is removed, everything's pushed flat and it cooks really evenly. So the way we're gonna do that is starting at the bottom of the carcass, we're just gonna take our poultry shears. We've got these nice Wusthof ones that make it really easy. And you're just gonna cut straight up the side of the backbone, right along the side of it. When I get to the top here, make that final cut, I'll flip it around, head right back down the other side of the backbone. Now don't be too worried about how precise your cuts are at this point, because we can always clean this up once we get the backbone out of here. For the backbone, you can always save this to make stock with. It's great for adding flavor to your gravy, but we don't need it for the rest of this process. I'm gonna go ahead and separate the bottom here. We don't need this bit of just cartilage and fat and skin. Get rid of that. We'll come in here and we'll clean up some of the extra stuff that you don't wanna eat, right? You don't need any of these, uh, these guts. Any of the yucky stringy stuff, take it out of there. And one more thing we wanna do to help this thing really lay flat is we're gonna come in here, scissors or shears right underneath the breastbone and just give it a little snip. And now, crack that and lay it flat. So when you flip this guy over, now the breasts are on roughly the same level as the thighs. These are gonna cook just a touch faster, which is great because we want the finishing temperature about 175 on these, 155, 160 on the breasts. Now we're gonna do kind of your extracurricular cleaning up. What the, the unrequired stuff, uh, when you come around here to the rib cage, you can always snip the edge of that off. Fewer small bones to worry about later when you're picking through the meat. There's also this bone that runs right alongside, kind of a blade bone get right underneath that and I'll actually use my hands to work this out because it has a joint where it'll pop out of at the top. Use my knife just to get me all the way there. So now that's out of the way and one less thing you have to throw away after the fact. Be careful here because if you got a little jagged edge, that can cut you, so you want to work carefully. Rely on your knife a little bit if you need to. Again, all of this stuff is optional at this point. So another thing that you have down here on the thighs is right next to the backbone, there's this bone that hangs out on the opposite side of the ball joint. So you can remove that so that you have very little to trim after this bird's cooked. 
First we'll cut those ribs off of there and then you just want to feel for this bone. You can actually get your fingers to almost touch underneath it. See it slides right under there. Work your way back. Same thing right here and then comes right to that ball joint. And that's where it releases from, right next to that ball joint. So no loss on that, it's really just bones. Now right in here where the breasts meet, that's where that wishbone is. And if you remove it right now, you can actually cut slices straight out of the breast once this thing's fully cooked. This is optional as well, but it's really nice if you want to be able to slice for serving or for presentation. So you just slide your knife right underneath it, out the end of the bird, and then work your way back down to the center where that breast bone is. Do the same thing here. That bone is right here, so we're going to slide it underneath, pop it right out the other side, and work it all the way out to the end. And then back down to the breast bone. And then it's just going to take a little bit of finagling Twist it out of there. There we go. I'm pretty well done trimming up on all of this stuff. The only thing I have left to do now is I want to make sure that we get all of this meat exposed. So we're going to pull the skin back. This way we can make sure that as we drop this in our brine, the brine has access to the meat itself and not just the skin. So just using my hands, I'm going to pull that stuff free. Expose a lot of that meat and then put it right back in place. We'll flip it over now. And you can do the same thing with the breasts. Now inevitably, you'll end up with some of these getting some tears on them. It's not a big deal. But if you can, you're going to try and avoid that for appearance sake. And now from the top of the bird, just pulling that skin back, work your hand underneath there in between the skin and the flesh and open all that up. Perfect. Well, the bird's ready to go into the brine now. And because it's spatchcocked, it actually makes it a lot easier to fit a couple of them into one briner bucket if you're looking to do two at the same time. Now let's talk about brining just a little bit just so we understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. When we brine something, what we're doing is putting our protein into a salty solution. And as it soaks in that solution, the salt kind of works its way in through osmosis. And what happens during that time is the cell walls and the meat start to open up a bit, and that creates more room for moisture to stay inside the meat. So what you end up with is juicier turkey, and that's what we all want, juicy turkey. So we're going to use this opportunity to also add some flavor in the form of our butcher house brine. This is by Cattleman's Grill. I'm super excited I got to help develop this brine. It's really got all of the basic stuff that you want in a brine. It's got salt, brown sugar, sugar, some onions, some garlic. All these things are great when it comes to poultry, when it comes to pork. It's going to be very versatile. But the other cool thing about it is that you can really dress it up with something like apple cider or add your own herbs to it, whatever it may be. Today we're going the barbecue route, so we're going to stick with basic brine and apple cider. Now we're going to do equal parts cold water and apple cider. So two and a half quarts of each. Coming on in with the apple cider. Look at it, it's nice and cloudy. That means there's lots of good stuff in there, I think. I think that's could be scientifically proven. And then we're gonna dump in the full pound of the butcher house brine. Let's get in there with a whisk and make sure that we can dissolve some of this salt and sugar here. Then just sit at the bottom. No need to heat this up though. Everything's fine enough that it will dissolve into the brine. All right, so we're going in the bucket head first. Swan dive or turkey dive. Going breast down, fully submerged. Lock it in place with the plate and it stays submerged. Throw that in the fridge. 
So into the fridge, an hour per pound on the turkey. A little bit more than that's gonna be just fine. You're just gonna get a little extra flavor. You're not gonna do any damage. Now speaking of that brine, the brine as well as the seasoning that we're gonna use on the outside of the bird and in the injection, that stuff's all available as a turkey kit, just like the last couple of videos we've done. Whether you're looking for just the flavors themselves or if you need the tools, the bucket, the shears, the slicer, we've got it all in kits for you guys make it super easy on you this holiday season check the link in the video description so we started brining a bird last night this has been soaking all night long in that apple based brine with the cattleman's butcher house you really only need about an hour per pound on our 15 pound bird but it's been in there for about 18 hours and that's totally fine So just sopping up some of the extra brine here. Now looking at our bird, this particular one you can see got a little extra skin here and there. Kind of got a little tear in our skin here, but we're still going to keep this fully covered. That's only a visual aspect. Everything's still going to work out just fine for the way the skin's hanging now. We'll probably trim a little bit of this back. Now for this bird, we want to give the skin a chance to really dry out, to give us a little bit crispier finish on the bird. If that's something that's important to you, then you should definitely take this step. If not, you can skip right over this, but we're actually going to let this bird air dry for about 24 hours in the fridge before we smoke it. I've done this up to 48 hours. It seems the longer that you can let that skin dry out, the more crispy it is in the end. So I'll let you guys decide how important that is to you, but we're gonna go through the process so you can see and understand it. As the skin dries out on the bird when it's sitting in the refrigerator, it kind of tightens up a bit, forms its way onto the body, which makes it difficult to get some rub or seasoning underneath there after drying it out. So we're gonna put some seasoning and some injection into this bird today. It won't be enough salt that it really causes any problems on the meat. It just gives it enough time for that seasoning to really soak into the meat of the turkey. Speaking of that seasoning, today we're gonna to be using the R. Butzer Smoking Cherry Habanero, just a fantastic barbecue rub, poultry, pork, doesn't matter, it's really good on there. We're gonna give a light little coat on the meat here. Great salt to it, great sugar, a little bit of chili. It's not terribly spicy, so don't be deceived by that word habanero in there. It mellows out really nice as it cooks, and it gives you that really nice red pop on the surface as well. So we'll lift this up and get the bottom side of the breast here, or the bottom half rather. Not going too heavy. We are going to inject just a little bit of our seasoning along with our apple infused butter. And we'll hit the skin before this goes on the cooker. So before I inject it, I'm gonna transfer this over to a wire lined sheet pan. And on this wire rack, uh, it allows some air circulation so everything can dry out really nicely. Now to make our injection, we're gonna start with one stick of butter, unsalted butter that's been melted down and add to that a quarter cup of apple cider. I mean that really nice, thick, dank apple cider, not some thinned out something from concentrate, lots of flavor in there. And we're gonna to add to that two teaspoons of the cherry habanero seasoning. Give that a stir. And make sure that whatever you're adding seasoning wise to your injection, that it's fine enough that it can make it through the needle that you're using to inject with. Otherwise you're gonna get a clog and you'll have a mess on your hand. So load up the uh, pistol grip injector here. We're gonna start with the breast where we really wanna concentrate uh, the injection. We're adding that fat to the leaner part of the meat which is going to result in a really juicy product and we're just adding some flavor while we're at it. So what I like to do is poke that in there, create a little pocket, inject, and then wait just a moment before pulling that back out. And that butter is hitting cold meat. So it's actually gonna solidify in there, which is great because it makes it difficult for it to come back out. So just work in a grid pattern here, 
work your way around these breasts and whatever's left would distribute between the thighs and even the wings. All right, that's pretty much it. We're going to just take any excess moisture off the surface to help get this thing started. And then we'll let this rest in the fridge overnight and into tomorrow. Well, guys, we're back 24 hours later. We've let the bird dry out, and I've just pulled it out of the fridge. We can take a look at that here in a second. What we're going to do next is head over to the Kamado Joe and get it fired up and ready to smoke. So we've got the KJ3. It's all cleaned out and ready to go. I'm going to add some of our Kamado Big Block charcoal. This stuff's great for smoking because it burns nice and slow, super consistent, no extra stuff added. Now the way I like to set this up is I'll fill probably about two-thirds of this basket about to the top and I'll leave a little air hole in the front to make sure we have constant air movement. And we're going to use the electrolyte to get things started today. So this has been rolling probably five, 10 minutes now with the door wide open for maximum airflow. Our charcoal up here is super hot now. It's going really well. So we're gonna get our slow roller and the divide and conquer system in place. I'm gonna wait to put the grates on because I wanna stabilize the temperature at about 300 degrees before I get my wood down there and I'm gonna leave those grates off. That way I have really easy access to throw a chunk of apple wood in the bottom. So for now we open up the top, we wait for it to come up to about 300, close it down and make sure it's leveled off. So while we wait for the grill to stabilize, let's go ahead and take a look at the turkey and get it seasoned up and ready to go on the grill. So as you can see, it's dried out a little bit, which is great. It's gonna help us to get that bite through skin. Uh, when it comes to smoking a turkey, you're never really gonna have like a crispy crunchy outside. Uh, unless you throw it under a broiler at the end. But this way, by drying out the skin, we should get something that's bite through and really nice to chew on. Now we already did some of our pre-seasoning underneath the skin, which is great because we don't have to mess the skin up by pulling it all back. But you guys can see that some of that's there on the surface. What I do want to do is flip this over so that we can season the back side of it. So just anywhere we see a little bit exposed meat back here, we're going to hit it with our barbecue rub. It's okay if we get under that thigh a little bit again. And then on the skin itself. Now on this bird, we ended up with one of those little tears that we talked about sometimes happens, and that's fine. But just to make sure that we don't get this skin pulling all the way back on the breast, I'm just gonna pin that down right there. Keep it from moving too much. And then the next thing that we wanna think about is how to get a nice browning on the outside. Now this is gonna get pretty dark from the smoke itself, but we're gonna help that along as well as help the rub stick to the outside of the bird by hitting it with some fat first. And this is that spray duck fat. You could just use straight up oil if you like. Really any sort of fat. Now we've got something that that rub can hold onto on the outside. We're going to hit the skin so that the skin tastes just as good as the meat and so it looks really nice as well. But as I mentioned, this one's going to get pretty dark with the smoke from the applewood and the charcoal. One last thing I like to do before the bird goes on is just to fold these wing tips back a little bit. Kind of holds the wing in tighter to the body. You're not going to end up eating that tip anyway. It's just going to brown up get crunchy. And just like that. All right, we've just crossed that 300 threshold. We want to go just 300 or a little bit lower, so we're going to crank this down a bit. And we'll slide the bottom door to about an inch open for now. We can make adjustments when it stabilizes. 
Well, we're holding steady right at 300 now. So we're gonna add our apple wood. We've got a couple of chunks of kiln dried apple wood here. I'm gonna give this just a burst of air to get our wood to ignite. And once we see a little bit of flame, we'll close this up and put everything back together. We're gonna go on the upper rack here on the divide and conquer system to create some distance between this plate and the turkey. Perfectly centered, that fits just right. Let's close it up and let it smoke. And this is gonna be a smoked bird start to finish. So all we're looking for is a finishing internal temperature of 155 in the deepest part of the breast. At that point, the legs will be a little bit beyond that, maybe by about 20 degrees, which is perfect for their finishing temperature as well. In the meantime, we're just gonna let it smoke, watch it color up really nice. All right, so the bird's just gone on the grill. And the next thing I wanna do is prepare a little bit of dipping sauce to go alongside our turkey. It's essentially a barbecue sauce that we're gonna doctor up with some holiday flavors. So we're gonna start with a base of one of my favorite barbecue sauces, it's Firebug Mild. A really fruity sauce. We got about one cup, a little bit more in there. But this has already got blackberries and raspberries in it, some really great flavors. And to add to that fruit profile, we're gonna add a cup of apple cider, two cups of cranberries, and then to balance the tartness of those cranberries, a half cup of maple syrup. I'm gonna bring this up to a simmer and watch as the skins on these cranberries start to pop open. And that's how we'll know that these are broken down and softened, at which point we're gonna get our immersion blender out and puree it smooth. Just gonna keep this sauce moving and we'll start to see these berries just popping open. There's one right there that's already gone. Look at that. So it's kind of like a bag of popcorn. Once it stops popping, you don't hear anything for a while. That's kind of how you know that the cranberries are good. They're softened, they've popped open, they're getting cooked. So I'm gonna turn the heat off now and we're gonna hit this thing with the immersion blender. So we're pretty smooth now. I'm gonna get a little taste and see how we're doing. It's got a really great deep red color to it. Mmm. It's sweet, it's tart. It's like a cranberry barbecue jam almost, but in a looser form. And I wanna keep it a little bit looser like that. If you wanted to cook it down further, you could kinda of concentrate that and get it thicker. But I think we're gonna leave it just a little bit thinner so that you can actually dunk some of your turkey into it. At this point, there's nothing else to do except to get this into a jar and throw it back into the refrigerator so it can chill down and be ready to serve by the time the turkey comes off. We're right about three hours into this cook now and this bird has soaked up so much smoke. You're gonna see here in just a second, but more importantly, that internal temperature has reached 155 in the breast, which means it's ready to come off the grill. Look at that. Now that is a smoke soaked bird if ever I've seen one. That dark color right there, that's all of that smoke. That's not burnt, that's not over caramelized, that's just the color of the applewood smoke that's passed over the skin and clung right on there. Now if we get down here into the breast, you can see my hole where I've been checking. I'm not gonna create too many of these holes. Pull right into the center here. Whoa! Yeah, this puppy's popped right up to 161, which is fine. As long as we're keeping it under 165, we're in good shape. Look at that juice we're starting to lose. We gotta get this thing off the grill. So for now, we're just gonna loosely cover this bird in foil and let it rest for about 15 minutes before we slice into it. So we're gonna start by taking this bird apart here at the legs and thighs, which is super easy because all that's holding this on right now is this little bit of skin. Did get some nice crunch on the edges there after all. We should have a nice tender bite through skin on the top of the leg there as well. 
I'm going to come in here and remove this wing. Just working around the ball joints there. Follow the anatomy of the bird and it comes apart pretty easy. And it's a good idea to get a cutting board like this one that's got these troughs that can really catch that juice because as that juice runs to the edges here, we can capture that and we want to keep it. There's tons of flavor in there. You run your slices through there before you serve them and add all that flavor back to the turkey. Now for our breasts, we'll slice this right down the middle. Pick one side of the breastbone here. Work our way right down to the rib cage. And that rib cage should peel right off. Can't forget we had a toothpick in there to hold everything together. And you'll remember that when you remove that wishbone ahead of time, you can actually go ahead and just cut slices straight off the breast right down to the rib cage. And boy, look at all the juice in that white meat. That is a juicy turkey breast. That little bit of yellow tint tells me that we've got some butter left in there as well. Man, this smells amazing. It smells like barbecue. That's a really nice looking piece of turkey right there. Let's get a taste. Mmm. It's just melting in my mouth. So tender, lots of juice, just a touch of sweetness from that butter injection. I really think it's from that apple cider. It's not super overpowering, it's just there. On the outside, you've got great smoke from the applewood chunks inside the Kamado Joe. That's how a barbecue bird should taste. I'm gonna dive into this dark meat as well with a dip into our Cran Apple barbecue sauce. Just grab a chunk of thigh. Look at that. The fat rendering out of the skin. Nice bit of crunch on it. Mm. That dark meat is where it's at. It's so velvety in texture. Just tons of juice to it. Man, I love that tart kick. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit tart out of that barbecue sauce. And it's got this little bit of black pepper burn. It's not overpowering. It's really going to work for any age. If my seven-year-old can eat this at home and love it, I bet your whole family could love it too. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out the Smoked Barbecue Turkey Kit at atbbq.com or in the link in the video description. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.